Now, rent across the country have written record highs, risen to record highs for the 15th month running, with the market seeing increases of around 10% in the past 12 months. That is according to the property portal Rightmove. And it raises all of those questions, doesn't it, about whether or not young people have any right to moan about housing, buying a house, etc. Here to break down the numbers is our economics and business editor, Liam Halligan, with On The Money. Loads of other countries rent, don't they? Like Germany, I think it's a lot more common than it is over here. I mean, is this just a ridiculous British home ownership aspiration, do you think? No, I don't, I don't think so. Germany has much cheaper homes to rent and to buy because Germany has a lot more homes than we have. Germany has about 550 homes, Patrick, for every 1,000 people. We have less than 400. France has 520. We have less than 400. That's why the cost of housing in this country is so... Hi, whether you're trying to rent or buy, we usually focus on buying, don't we? But we're going to focus on renting in this little section. Uh, and that's why young people are finding it so difficult, because in recent decades, the rate of home building, both for rent and buy, has slowed down so much. Uh, and that's why prices have gone up so much more than wages. Let's, so let's have a look at these numbers from Right Move. Yeah. Uh, came out early this morning. So the average UK rent, hold on to your hat, is £1,278 a month now. That's 10% up on this time last year. That's uh, obviously a huge increase. And the average rent in London is £2,627 a month. That's 12% up on last year. This is because there aren't enough homes. And it, that's why the amount of time you have to spend looking for a home, the competition to get a rental is going up. The average rental, says Right Move, attracts 25 inquiries now. Each, you know, emails or viewings or phone calls to the agent, that's four times, three times more than last year. It was eight, eight inquiries this time last year. And the hottest rental market, it's not actually in London, uh, it's barely in the southeast. It's in Luton, which is in Bedfordshire, about 30 miles north yeah. of uh, London. But you've also had rent rises in a single year of 20% plus on average in Loughborough, in the Midlands, in Preston, in the northwest, of course, in Edinburgh and in Paisley in Scotland. So, look, rents are much higher in the capital, but they're going up pretty fast outside the capital, too. OK, and you don't think it's fair. As you will know, we get a load of emails yeah. in from people, and I've had quite a few join this show, that said... I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase one of them that said her and her husband were in their early 30s, yeah. had to scrimp and save, they you know, had one car, they were renting, they couldn't mm. afford to buy. And over a period, they didn't have kids. Over the period when it got to their late 30s, they finally, after not going on holidays and doing all of those mm. things, were in a position where they could get a mortgage. And, you know, I do see a lot of people in their early 20s who I know are out and about all the time, going on two or three foreign holidays a year, mm. who are, you know, rooftop bars, drinking cocktails, who then complain that they can't afford mm. a house or they haven't got any savings. Well, I'm not here to be fair or unfair. I'm here to tell you what the facts are. And the facts are that when I bought my first house in the late 90s, the average home in this country was about four times the price uh, of the average annual income, right? Mm. The average home in this country is now almost 10 times the average annual income. So today's generation of youngsters are having to pay much, much, much higher house prices to buy a house and indeed to rent a house than my generation were. Even though interest rates now are lower because the houses themselves are so much more expensive. So yes, when I bought my first house, interest rates were up at sort of 10 odd yeah. percent. But because the house was less, the mortgage could be much less, I ended up paying a lower share of my income in payments to service that mortgage, even at 10%, than a youngster would pay to service a mortgage now at 4 5 or 6%, because their mortgage is so much bigger because the house is more expensive. Mm. So, But this is intergenerational, and it's interesting, Patrick. At the Tory conference, there were lots and lots of young people, which isn't something you always see at a Tory conference. A lot of ha the housing fringe meetings that I spoke at, um, half the room was youngsters, people from groups like Yimby. They're not no in my backyard, the NIMBYs. They're the Yimbys, yes, in my backyard. And there are Yimby movements all over the UK, all over 
you know, the Western world, Europe and in particular America, mm. because youngsters are now really angry that they can't buy a home. And my, my, my concern is if it's really hard to rent, if it's really hard to buy, this yep. is messing with our demography. It is. And that's it what is. turns in the end, unfortunately, makes politics more extreme because people go for, you know, idiot policies that have been proven to yeah. fail, like rent controls and so on. Yeah. So I'm hoping we can avoid those. Uh, because the evidence against them is very Interesting, strong. Interesting, isn't it? You know, long-term decision-making for a brighter future, or whatever it was, that slogan. That, that was the Tory slogan, yeah. Not to say anything about housing. Yeah, it was a big mess. Is, it's not just a looming crisis, it's here. But anyway, Liam. Let's see if Labour do better in Liverpool. Well, that will be interesting. Liam, thank you very much. Liam Halligan, our economics and business editor.